Vic Gates, guys and gals, how's everybody doing? Um, as I've been promising for a while, I'm gonna uh, we're gonna work up a new game uh, for Flames of War. We're gonna uh, it's kind of a big Soviet versus German battle, and uh, we're really gonna start digging into more of the smoke rules and using a lot more smoke in our games. Um, so we're gonna run through a play-by-play. Kind of pre-tournament lists, although both of these armies are roughly 4,000 points, uh, Germans versus Soviets, uh, there is going to be a, an objective to the game. So each, um, each team is going to basically have a strike force of infantry that will go in to seize the objective if the tanks can't take the objective. So that's basically what we're looking at doing with this game. Um, we are going to stick with uh, uh, the rule of as smoke as pertaining to Russians. Russians will not be allowed to fire smoke. Uh, last game we let the Russians fire smoke with their artillery um, and the Russians just walked all over the Germans. So <clears throat> we're going to play this game out. It's basically the same lists. Um, but the Soviets will not be allowed to fire smoke, and, and that's per the per strict rules, um, you know, off the list. If you look at the, any of the German lists, or I'm sorry, the Russian lists, uh, Soviet lists, you will see that they have no smoke bombardments on any of their artillery or mortar teams. So <clears throat> the thought is, uh, you know, historically, technically, they did not fire smoke, hence. It's not carried over to the game, and that may have an impact on uh, why the, the, the Soviets mopped up the Germans pretty well last time. So we're going to kind of go over the lists here a little bit real briefly. Um, I'm also going to show you pre-deployment units uh, as, as blocks of units so you can really see how they look before deployment. I'm going to do a deployment. I'm basically kind of just playing against myself to kind of like a, a test chess match, uh, you know, just obviously being fair with myself, knowing what uh, each, each team is going to be uh, having basically a game plan um, on how they're going to attack the objective. And then I just do a back and forth and I'll do a play by play uh, uh, as we go along just like the other uh, battle test battle report that I've done. Um, you know sometime in the future my son's home from college, he's been pretty busy running with friends and doing other things. We got a new Xbox One, so he's we've been playing a lot of Battlefront. We've been he's been playing a lot of Fallout 4. Um, there's another game that he plays online. So uh, we've been doing some of that. We have played some games. We played some X-Wing. So uh, I try to get him down here. We'll do a battle report at some point uh, with him and I. But as for this little battle report, it's just going to be myself playing against myself and kind of testing out the the use of the smoke. And uh, some of the some uh, ironing out some of the issues with lists. Then I'm going to have to iron out a, a 1,500 point list for taking to tournaments. Probably going to do a 1,500 point Soviet list, a 1,500 point German list, and go to a tournament with both of those armies and play both of them. Um, I get around maybe the next battle report we do. It'll be uh, Americans versus Germans. Uh, that that can be pretty interesting. We'll change up the board. This is still uh, the same setup I had last time. It's very similar to a, you know, a bombed-out factory complex outside of Stalingrad. You could you could pretend uh, anywhere on east on the Eastern Front, you know, at, at, you know, Poland, anywhere along there that's basically got a, a bombed-out factory complex. So uh, that's what we're going to do. We basically have a uh, uh, both my lists have been generated here and put into Slickies. Um, they were generated off of the uh, the uh, Army Builder uh, software that I own, and uh, it's it's pretty efficient. Uh, they don't do such a great job of updating the Army lists because it's all done on a volunteer basis, which honestly is pretty hokey. Uh, but overall, it gets the job done. Uh, I'm playing a Soviet tank of the battalion. Um, like I said, is about 4,000 points. And then we're playing my classic German Panzer Grenadiers. Um, I did bring out some of the big toys to play. 
And you'll notice just about any time you play, um, you know, Soviet lists and German lists, the Soviets are always going to outnumber the Germans almost two to one. But the Germans have um, a higher rate of fire, uh, especially with the King Tigers. I have two elephants on this list, and uh, they can sit back. They're really more in a defensive posture, um, and, and the idea is sitting back, whittling down the Soviet forces, and then trying to strike, strike in and take the objective. Is kind of the way the game plan is going to be. So. Uh, uh, I won't go into all the details of the list, but we've basically got, uh, you know, the King Tigers I mentioned, we have four of those. We have two elephants, uh, sit, going to sit back and do some uh, picking. And then, of course, we've got the Panthers. I mean, you know, a lot of guys are, well, no, Panthers were never used outside of Stalingrad. You know, only Panzer IVs, rarely a Tiger. <laughs> you know, most of the Tigers and the Panthers were used at the great tank battle there. I forget the name of it. It was in the Eastern Front there. There was a huge tank battle. But <clears throat> like I said before in other videos, just uh, it's just a vague idea of, of where the battle is taking place. Okay. So uh, the one thing I could point out, we'll go over, I'll show you with the camera here, that the Fallschirmjägers I've put into half tracks. So that should be pretty interesting. And they did work in that role, they would parachute in and maybe meet up with an army group as a reinforcement uh, platoons and would be put into whatever half, you know, uh, half tracks the Germans could scrummage up for a uh, for an operation. And instead of feeling Panzer Grenadiers, we're putting in Fallschirmjäger elite units uh, to, uh, to take the objective. So that would be pretty interesting. The other thing I've been doing on some of my videos is today we're enjoying a fine taste of a great craft beer. Uh, it's from the New Holland Brewing Company. It's called The Poet. It's an oatmeal stout. I've been drinking a little bit of this, uh, you know, six pack a week or so uh, through the holiday season and uh, very good. Highly recommend it. If you like stouts, you like your dark beers, uh, this is pretty mild, uh, but nice and creamy. And uh, it's, it's just a very delicious, good sipping beer, especially good for gaming. So if you haven't tried this yet, it's, it's available to you locally. New Holland Brewery, Brewery, and uh, The Poet. It even has the, the raven on the front of it. It's pretty, pretty sweet. So uh, without further ado, uh, I'll uh, throw this camera on pause and I'll, uh, we'll just segue right over to showing the pre-deployment. Okay, so here we are. Uh, I'm going to show you the gaming table again. I also have a video on building this gaming table from scratch and uh, how to do it. It's basically a 6x6 six six, uh, foam core board. I have plenty of scrap left over foam core over here, but that's basically what I use. Uh, it's a great material. And then we use on the outside of the gaming table um, we we'll use this fiber tape on the edges, and then using a a white glue, you can uh, you can brush it on the edges, and you can see it makes a nice protective edge. You don't have to trim it much; it's just a tiny bit of trimming, but you can see it gives like a nice texture. It helps protect the edges, wraps all the way around. Uh, of course, painted both sides of the board, and then we started uh, you know applying the flocking material. So. As I said, I've got an entire video on that, so this is a game board you can make easily and inexpensively. And you can even do the 4x4, four four. this is the 6x6. Six six. I personally like the size, it fits in my gaming space very very well here. Uh, we're going to the dice uh, trays for our gaming, so that the dice don't end up all over the floor and into the models. And they've been working really, really well, especially this octagonal shape I mean you can really um, you can really you know bounce the dice off the sides and really get some good action on the dice uh, it's very high quality you can get them on amazon.com <laughs> they're not very expensive they're maybe 20 bucks um, and I highly recommend them so uh, here we go we're going to start with the German side you see I pre-staged my Fallschirmjägers which I can also tell apart from my other troops because I painted the, tr the rim of the bases 
a uh, German orange uh, to de designate them as Falschenjägers. Um, I've got my oatmeal stout here, of course, but I've got my smoke markers that we made several years ago. Those work great for marking destroyed units and destroyed tanks. And uh, both sides, you know, are going to be equipped with uh, their template, uh, dice, and uh, smoke markers. Uh, here's basically the layout of the battlefield guys. We're going to do the bombed out factory complex, as I mentioned earlier. Uh, the Germans are looking at a wooded area, and a couple other wooded areas to the flank. We got a couple of hills. Um, we have our probably this is where even once we do deployment, I'm pretty much probably going to keep this artillery unit. Uh, we're looking at a at howitzers. I'll show you how I mark mine. Here's my artillery unit, all detailed out, and then underneath I mark what the unit is so there's no confusion 10.5 centimeter howitzers another thing to point out for you newer players is you do want to space your units out in case they are fired upon, fired upon by artillery there's a, in the rules it will specify I think it's uh, two inches to four inches apart <laughs> and that will help uh, you know, keep a template, you know, a normal artillery template can only cover probably two units instead of getting all three of three units. It'll, it'll limit the other team uh, from, from taking out more than two units at a time. So, nice little tip there. Um, so, as I mentioned, I've got two elephants pre-deployment. We have two platoons of panthers of three tanks each. There's my uh, German half tracks, which will be carrying that are carrying my Panzer Grenadiers. Um, we have a power platoon of four King Tigers, so those are going to be fun to play with. We have a command unit of two Panthers, and I have two uh, rocket batteries that will be firing smoke. And I can also use the 10.5 millimeter howitzers to fire smoke. So that way both sides of the board are covered. I also move them about four inches apart so they can't get targeted under the same template. If being fired out from the Soviets, which <clears throat> now I think of it, this game we, uh, with the points, we do not have, last game we had a Soviet artillery group over there. But these are just uh, to protect their... Uh, their command center, which is the Russian objective, um, the we have the ZIS threes, which are basically anti-tank guns. You can see them; they're hiding behind this hedgerow. And you see how I do my hedgerows? I do them on uh, oh, it's uh, uh, Luan. It's basically like a uh, very thin board you buy, and you can cut with a jigsaw and flock them, and that works out really well for hedgerows. They're easily to, easy to move. Here's another hedgerow I have back here for the Germans. So I just, you know, something simple. They're easy to store. Uh, spray them down good with uh, white glue, uh, watered down white glue, and they, they're very durable too. So it works out great that way. So uh, same thing with the trees. I like to glue my trees in stands, and I separate the trees far enough apart where it's easy to put units, uh, tanks, and other units on the on the boards and it will act as basically a wooded area. Obviously if you're firing at those units it'll be a at a negative because they'll be concealed. Um, so uh, that's basically what you're looking at um, for the Germans. Kind of just basically a tank, heavy tank strike force. Um, like I said the objective for the Germans is to take the Russian command post which is positioned back there and the uh, Russian objective for this game is they could either seize a command unit I'm hiding behind my beer here we have a Russian uh, staff team or a, Russian, a German staff team that they could seize and they have their little command their little command vehicle <laughs> 
So they can either seize that or adjust uh, by driving the, the, the Germans into retreat. Uh, so you can say this is the Germans trying to retake a bombed out factory complex. Uh, they're trying to run, run the Russians back and they're going to seize the Russian uh, headquarters. So we'll go over here and I'll show you the uh, Russian side of the board. And nice little alcove here for the Russian player. And then we have the Russian infantry teams in wait right here. And there are the Russian trucks. Now see they didn't have half tracks, they just had whatever kind of truck the, the Soviets could, could rummage up, <laughs> right, and seize and paint green. Um, so as I mentioned, we got the ZIS-3 anti-tank battery back here. They're hiding back here, protecting the command group. They have a pretty good range of the uh, Germans cross this uh, intersecting road. Uh, they're going to be pretty well fair game for the anti-tank guns. Um, so we have the IS-2s. We got a platoon of five. We got another platoon of five. We got another platoon of five. <laughs> um, we have some anti-tank gun uh, mobile guns here. We have the oh, I'd have to pull my sheet here because I sometimes forget these. These are the um, ISU 122s and 152s, respectively. Uh, we basically have three platoons. There's two, three, and three to position in various places around the, the board. So we're going to have about a 20-inch uh, deployment zone uh, off of the edge here. And basically it's the same thing. It's a heavy Russian attack force. You know, his, the historical bus will say, oh, they never fielded that many IS-2s, blah, blah, blah. Well, we play our games for fun. It's still a legal list. It's still legal. It was printed off of uh, a software program that... Uh, basically keeps uh, your lists legal uh, so so there you go. there you have it um, no t-34s uh, so we kind of stayed away from the t-34s kind of get bored with those like I said you really can't the, a lot of the Russian stuff can't go up against the late war German stuff unless you you're bumping them up to the the 152s and the is-2s which is a as which was an excellent tank so it's going to be a, a close showdown. Those, IS, those IS-2s, uh, those IS-2s are really tough to take out. They're 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 pretty great tanks for the Russians. And uh, like I said, I'm going to have to, as a German player, I'm really going to kind of have to just hold back and um, um, just pick off as many Russian tanks as I can. Uh, as a as the Russian commander, I'm going to focus on. Um, just really coming straight at the Germans really hard in a, in a mass force. Probably not going to do too many of the flanking moves. I'm going to try to just mass my forces in one big battle group and just come right at the Germans, punch through, and then do a flanking move and hopefully dr just drive the Germans off. So uh, we'll uh, get going here. I'll go ahead and throw this segment of the video up. So the next uh, video I put up, we'll start doing a, uh, the... Uh, actual uh, post deployment and then uh, roll to see who goes first. Ciao.